postscript to the Risho Ankoku Ran. I compiled the above work in the first year of the Bunno era, 1260, when the reverse marker of Jupiter was in the sector of the sky with the cyclical sign Kanu Saru. That is, I began the work during the Shoka era, 1257 to 1259, and completed it in the first year of Bunno. In the first year of the Shoka era, cyclical sign Hinoto Mi, on the 23rd day of the 8th month, at the time when the hour of the dog gives way to the hour of the boar, around 9 p.m., there was a severe earthquake. Observing this event, I conceived the work. Later, in the first year of Bunno, cyclical sign Kanu Saru, on the 16th day of the 7th month, I presented it to his lordship, the lay priest of Saimyoji who is now deceased, by way of Yadoya Zemin. Still later, in the first year of the Bunei era, I 264, cyclical sign Kino Ne, on the fifth day of the seventh month, when a great comet appeared, I became even more certain of the origins of these disasters. Then, on the eighteenth day of the intercalary first month of the fifth year of Bunei, cyclical sign Suchino Tatsu, nine years after the first year of Bunno, when I submitted the Risho Ankoku Ran, an official letter came from the great kingdom of the Mongols that lies to the west, threatening to attack our country. Again, in the sixth year of the same era, 1269, a second letter arrived. Thus the prediction that I made in my memorial, the Risho Ankoku Ran, has already proved to be true. In view of this, we may suppose that the predictions I made will continue to come true in the future as well. This work of mine has now been substantiated by fact, but this has in no regard happened because of my powers. Rather it has come about as a response to the true words contained in the Lotus Sutra. Background. In 1269, Mongol emissaries once more arrived at the Dazaifu, the government headquarters in Kyushu, pressing for an answer to their earlier demands. Nichiren is believed to have sent off another round of letters to high officials, which again failed to elicit a response. The brief postscript to the Risho Ankoku Ran, Risho Ankoku Ran Okugaki, which follows, dated the eighth day of the twelfth month of 1269, was appended to a copy of the Risho Ankoku Ran, which he wrote out himself, and warns that the prophecies set forth in that document more than nine years earlier are now coming true. Rationale for submitting the Risho Ankoku Ran. In the first year of the Shoka era, 1257, when the reverse marker of Jupiter was in the sector of the sky with the cyclical sign Hinoto Mi, on the 23rd day of the eighth month, at the time when the hour of the dog gives way to the hour of the boar, around 9 p.m., there occurred an earthquake of unprecedented magnitude. In the second year of the same era, 1258, cyclical sign Suchi no Uma, on the first day of the eighth month, there was a great wind. In the third year 1259, cyclical sign Suchinoto Hitsuji, a major famine occurred. In the first year of the Shogun era, 1259, cyclical sign Suchinoto Hitsuji, epidemics were rampant, and throughout the four seasons of the second year, 1260, cyclical sign Kanu Saru, the epidemics continued to rage without abating. By this time more than half the ordinary citizens of the nation had been laid low by death. The ruler of the country, alarmed at this state of affairs, turned to the scriptures of Buddhism and the non-Buddhist writings for help, ordering that various prayers be offered. These, however, failed to produce the slightest effect. On the contrary, famine and epidemics raged more fiercely than ever. I, Nichiren, observing this state of affairs, proceeded to consult the great collection of Buddhist scriptures. There I discovered the reason why these prayers are without effect and on the contrary actually make the situation worse, along with passages of proof to support it. In the end I had no other recourse than to compile a work to present my findings, entitling it, Risho Ankoku Ran. In the first year of the Bunno era, 1260, cyclical sign Kanu Saru, on the 16th day of the 7th month, at the hour of the dragon, 7 o'clock to 9 a.m., I handed it to Yadoya Nudo for presentation to his lordship, the lay priest of Saimyoji who is now deceased. This I did solely that I might repay the debt of gratitude that I owe to my native land. The essence of this memorial is as follows. This country of Japan is placed under the seven reigns of the heavenly deities and the five reigns of the earthly deities, and then under the hundred reigns of human sovereigns. During the reign of Emperor Kimei, the thirtieth of the human sovereigns, 
Buddhism was for the first time introduced from the kingdom of Paikchi. From that time until the reign of Emperor Kamu, the 50th human sovereign, a period of some 260 years, the various Buddhist scriptures were brought to Japan, as well as the six sects of Buddhism. At this time, however, the Tendai and Shingon sects had not yet been introduced. During the reign of Emperor Kamu, there was a young priest named Saicho, who was a disciple of the administrator of monks Gyoyo of Yamashina Dera Temple. He later came to be known as the great teacher Dengyo. He made a thorough study of the six sects that had been introduced to Japan earlier, as well as of the Zen doctrine, but none of these seemed to satisfy him. Earlier, in the reign of Emperor Shomu, a priest of Tang China, named Qian Chen, Ganjin, had come to Japan and brought with him the commentaries of Tian Te. Forty or more years had passed and Saicho was the first person to peruse them and understand the profound meaning of Buddhism. In the fourth year of the Enraiku era, 785, Saicho founded a temple on Mount Hiei in order to ensure the continuance of peace in heaven and on earth. Emperor Kamu paid honor to the new establishment, designating it as a place of worship where prayers could be offered to the guardian star of the ruler. He ceased to heed the teachings of the six sects and instead gave wholehearted allegiance to the perfect doctrines of the Tendai sect. In the 13th year of the Enraiku era, 794, the emperor moved the capital from Nagaoka to the city of Heian.5 in the 21st year of the same era, 802, on the 19th day of the first month, the emperor summoned 14 great scholars of the six sects from the seven major temples of Nara, including such priests as Gonso and Choyo, to Takao Dera Temple, and ordered them to engage Saicho in debate. These masters of the six sects were not able to hold their own against Saicho even for a single exchange of opinions, to the extent that their mouths were as incapable of speech as noses. The five teachings of the Kegon sect, the three periods of the Hoso sect, and the two storehouses and three periods, propounded by the Sanron sect, all of these doctrines were demolished by Saicho. The doctrines of the six sects not only were refuted, but it was demonstrated how they all go against the correct teaching. On the 29th day of the same month, the emperor handed down an edict severely criticizing the 14 debaters who had confronted Saicho. These priests in turn drew up a letter apologizing for their conduct and submitted it to the emperor. Thereafter, one sovereign after another paid allegiance to Mount Hiei, treating it with even greater deference than a filial son shows toward his father and mother, regarding it, with greater awe, than the common people manifest before the might of the ruler. At times the rulers issued edicts to honor it, at other times they were obliged to give their approval to its unjust demands. We may note in particular that Emperor Sewa was able to ascend the throne as a consequence of the powerful prayers of the priest Ario of Mount Hiei. The emperor's maternal grandfather, the minister of the right Kujo, for this reason submitted a written pledge of his fidelity to Mount Hiei. The general of the right Minamoto no Yoritomo, the founder of the Kamakura Sogonate, it will be recalled, was a descendant of Emperor Sewa. And yet the government authorities in Kamakura, though they may or may not be following the right course in their administration, ignore and turn their back on Mount Hiei. Have they no fear of the punishment of heaven? In the time of the retired emperor Gotoba, during the Kenan era, 1201 to 1204, there were two arrogant men, Honin and Denichi. Their bodies were possessed of demons, and they went about deluding the people of both high and low station throughout the country, until everyone had become a Nebutsu believer or else was hastening to join the Zen sect. Those who continued to pay respect to Mount Hiei became surprisingly few and lacking in ardor, and throughout the country, the priests who were authorities on the Lotus Sutra or the Shingon teachings found themselves ignored and rejected. As a result, the sun goddess, Hachiman, and the gods of the seven shrines of Sano, who guard and protect Mount Hiei, as well as the other great benevolent deities who protect the different parts of the nation, were no longer able to taste the flavor of the law. Their power and brilliance waned, and they abandoned the country. Thus the demons were able to gain access to the nation and to bring about disasters and calamities. These disasters, as I stated in my memorial, were omens signifying that our country would in the end be destroyed by a foreign nation. Later, in the first year of the Bunei era, 1264, cyclical sign Kino Ne, on the fifth day of the seventh month, a comet appeared in the east, 
and its light shone over the whole country of Japan. This is an evil portent such as has never been seen before since the beginning of history. None of the authorities on the Buddhist scriptures or the non-Buddhist writings could understand what had brought about such an ill omen. I became even more grieved and distressed. Now, nine years after I presented my memorial, to the lay priest of Saimyoji, in the intercalary first month of this year, the official letter arrived from the great kingdom of the Mongols. The events that have occurred match the predictions made in my memorial as exactly as do the two halves of a tally. The Buddha left this prediction, saying, 100 or more. Years after my passing, a great ruler named King Ashoka will appear in the world and will spread my relics far and wide. In the reign of King Chao, the fourth ruler of the Chou dynasty, the grand historian Su Yu made this prediction, a sage has been born in the western region. 1000 years from now, the noble teachings of this sage will be brought to this country. Prince Shotoku predicted, after my death, when 200 years or more have passed, the city of Hyan will be established in the province of Yamashiro. And the great teacher Tian Te predicted, 200 years or more after my death, I will be reborn in an eastern country and will spread my correct teaching. All of these predictions were fulfilled to the letter. When I, Nichiren, observed the great earthquake of the Shoka era, and the great wind and famine that occurred in the same era, as well as the major outbreak of epidemics that took place in the first year of the Shogun era, I-259, I made a prediction, saying, these are omens indicating that this country of ours will be destroyed by a foreign nation. I may seem to be praising myself for having made such a prediction, but, if our country should be destroyed, it would most certainly mean the destruction of the Buddhist teachings as well. The eminent Buddhist priests of our time seem to be of one mind with those who slander the law. In fact, they do not even understand the true meaning of the teachings of their own sects. It is certain that, if they should receive an imperial command or instructions from the government authorities to offer prayers in an effort to avert the evils that beset the nation, they would only make the Buddhas and deities angrier than they are already, and then the nation could not help but face ruin. I, Nichiren, understand the steps that should be taken to remedy the situation. Other than the sage of Mount Hiei, I am the only person in all of Japan who does. Just as there are not two suns or two moons, so two sages are not to be found standing side by side. If these words of mine are false, then may I be punished by the ten demon daughters who protect the Lotus Sutra that I embrace. I say all this solely for the sake of the nation, for the sake of the law, for the sake of others, not for my own sake. I will be calling upon you in person, and so I am informing you of this. If you do not heed my advice, you will surely regret it later. Respectfully, Nichiren, the fifth day of the fourth month in the fifth year of Bunei, 1268, cyclical sign Suchino Tatsu. To Hogan Gobo, background, in the first month of 1268, envoys from Kublai Khan arrived at the Dazaifu government offices in Kyushu. Proceeding to Kamakura, they presented the Sogonate with a message from the Khan demanding, in veiled terms, that Japan acknowledge fealty to the Mongol Empire. The envoys were sent back without an answer, and the government began taking steps to defend the country against foreign attack. At this time, Nichiren wrote the short work known as The Rationale for Writing the Risho Ankoku Ran, Ankoku Ran Gokin Yurai, and sent it to a man named Hokin Bo. Little is known about this man, his name indicates that he was a Buddhist priest, but he would appear to have been active in government circles. Nichiren explains the circumstances that led to his writing of the Risho Ankoku Ran eight years earlier and points out that the arrival of the Mongol emissaries with their threatening message substantiates the prophecy of foreign invasion that he had made in that treatise. In the tenth month of the same year, Nichiren sent letters to eleven high-ranking political and religious leaders, including the regent Hojo Tokimune, 1251-1284, the Chinese Zen priest Lanchai Dao Lung, Renke Doryu, 1213-1278, of Kenshoji, and the Ritsu priest Ryokan Ninsho, 1217-1303, of Gokurakuji, pointing out that the predictions in his Risho Ankoku Ran were now being fulfilled and demanding the opportunity to demonstrate the validity of his teachings in public religious debate. He failed to receive any response to his letters.